Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Alicia and I'm the owner of Alicia Be Creative. In today's tutorial, I'm making a I Love Margaritas and Tacos Tumblr. It was inspired by a vinyl print that I received from 311 Co. And to put a little bit of a twist on such a simple cup, we are going to be adding a cute little ice topper with a lime wedge, of course, to kind of add to the overall funness of this tumbler design. So of course, everything I use in today's video will be listed and linked down in the description description box down below. Be sure to check that description box out for discount codes and links to all of my social media. But before you go, be sure to give this video a huge thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. But let's go ahead and jump right into today's tutorial. All right, so to get started, we are going to be using a 30 ounce tumbler from Craft Haven. This is the 30 ounce screw on lid ones that I've been using in quite a few tutorials. So we're going to go ahead and prep our tumbler as we normally would. I'm just taking that base and I'm going to scuff that surface up with a sanding block and then clean that off with 91% rubbing alcohol. I am going to take this to be spray painted with a like lime green spray paint I have from rust -Oleum. And then we're going to put this right on the turner because we are going to do a cheap method glitter application here. So the glitter I'm using today is a fine glitter from Glitter Makes It Glitter, and this is called Salted Lime. It just was the perfect color and came in just in time and perfect for this design and cup. So what I've done there is I've taken about 30 mLs of epoxy and I've added a coating of glitter over top of that epoxy, enough to cover the epoxy, and then I've mixed that thoroughly. So this is a really like quick and easy way to get a cup glittered and epoxied at the same time. It saves you a little bit of time and if you are going to do one color on the cup, I definitely recommend doing it this way, especially if you're going to do like a fine glitter. So like I do this a lot with like cups that are going to be white, like have a white base or just a single fine glitter that I have a paint color that matches really close to the glitter. This is a real quick and easy way to get basically steps one and two finished really quickly. So I'm going to ensure that I have a good coating of that glitter filled epoxy all over my cup. And I'm going to then torch this of course to pop any bubbles and then we will let this cure. I did use Flint Sisters Artist Cure for this because I wanted to ensure that it had enough time for the glitter to settle and be ready to then and sand after curing. So I've only done one coat with that first initial coat of glitter and epoxy. We're going to take this off the turner and I'm going to sand the top rim. I'm not going to do any other sanding because again, this only has one coat of epoxy. So I don't want to do too much sanding here and potentially, you know, sand through my glitter to the stainless steel. Now though, what we're going to do is we're going to apply this vinyl. This is a transparent vinyl from 311 Co. I do have a discount code for her website in the description box. And so this is going to be a sort of full vinyl wrap over top of this glitter. And so the reason why we base painted the cup before we are adding the vinyl is because this is transparent. So a transparent vinyl essentially means that this is a see-through piece of vinyl. So you'll still be able to see sort of the decals, of course, but you want to put that over a base color because otherwise you're going to really be able to see pretty clearly anything that's underneath this vinyl. So of course I'm going to take my vinyl and I'm going to trim the edges and sort of shape that up and trim it to fit my cup with a bit of overlap here. And then we're going to go ahead and get this cup wrapped. So I'm going to take my time here in the beginning to put that vinyl wrap all the way around the cup, ensuring that it's going to meet on the other side. And I have enough sort of overlap to cover over the seam. That way we can cut around that section in the end. So I apply my vinyl wraps all the same. I like to cut the backing off about two to three inches off the backing and apply one side at a time. Once I've gotten that two inch you know, piece of vinyl applied, I then will roll the rest of the backing off using my large vinyl squeegee. So this really does make this easy. I've talked about this vinyl squeegee, like I feel like every time I use it, it's literally my, my favorite crafting tool right now because it just makes applying vinyl so simple, so easy, especially for full vinyl wraps because literally it fits the entire cup. 
So I'm just gonna continue to push that vinyl off or push the backing off the back of the vinyl until we get to the seam here. Then I'm gonna trim up the seam area. I'm just very carefully cutting a little bit with an overlap. I don't want there to be sort of gaps where just the glitter is shown. I really want that print to just meet very nicely. And so I'm going to trim that up before we focus and work on trimming the top and bottom edges of this vinyl. So with the vinyl applied, we can go ahead and begin to work on the rest of the cup here. So I like to just take my fingers and push the vinyl over the bottom edge first, and then I'll take my cup edging tool here and I'll just trim that bottom section. So for when you are applying vinyl over top of glitter or up over top of epoxy, I will tell you that you're going to want to trim your edges really nicely and probably even higher than you normally would if this was just over stainless steel because vinyl has a tendency to pucker over top of the uh, epoxy for whatever reason. I think just because you know, at the top and bottom edge, there just isn't enough for it to grip onto. And sometimes just the way the epoxy is, it really does just allow the epoxy to kind of pucker a bit. So if you're not going to use like a heat gun to, you know, seal those edges and make sure that there isn't any rippling down there, make sure you cut your edges really kind of higher than you normally would for a vinyl wrap, just so that you don't end up with needing to sand so much when you then put this under another coat of epoxy. So I'm telling you this, because I ended up running into the situation and I knew in my head that I probably should have cut the bottom seam a little bit higher than I normally would but I did end up with a little bit of puckering at the bottom just where the vinyl just didn't really want to stick very nicely it wasn't huge sections but enough where I couldn't place a piece of you know washi tape or vinyl over top of this without those sort of valleys and peaks and things down there where the vinyl crinkled showing. So what I just did was I am taking my sanding block and I am sanding down that vinyl carefully, making sure not to sand too much that it's, you know, going to show through after I apply the washi tape, but enough that the, it is smooth down at that bottom edge so that the washi tape can go over nice and smooth and you won't be able to see any of those, you know, uh, rippled edges at the bottom edge of the cup. So now I'm just gonna apply my washi tape. I'm just using a gold washi tape from Hobby Lobby. It's my favorite pack, the metallic pack I love to use. So I'm just using the gold washi tape from this pack to sort of line the vinyl and just sort of make it look purposeful. I feel like when I leave it blank and having those gaps where it's just glitter, to me it just looks a little weird. So I always like to just put a bit of washi tape or vinyl or something down there so it just looks purposeful why there is no vinyl all the way from top to bottom. Then to make sure that my washi tape isn't gonna give me a hard time when I go to epoxy, I'm gonna add a thin layer of polycrylic over top of the washi tape, just with a gloved hand. You don't need a whole lot, really like literally a less than a pea size to cover those sections. Let that dry for like 45 minutes. Put that on the turner for another coat of epoxy. Now we are ready to do our final decals for the cup. So I got this like bleach splat, Beach bleach spot, excuse me, the bleach spot image from Creative Fabrica. It came in like a bunch of different images, and I just picked one that was going to be large enough to cover what I wanted. I wanted more of a rounded bleach spot versus like a square or rectangle rectangular ones because they do have those available on Creative Fabrica as well. But I just cut that out of white vinyl. And so this is sort of another way where if you're not really good at creating like a bleach blot, bleach, I'm having such a hard time saying that word. If you're not really good at sort of doing this with white spray paint, you can just get an SVG that's super similar to what that sort of spot would look like on your cup and just cutting that out of white vinyl. So now because my um, section of vinyl that I have placed already was not really the same size and same shape as the decal, I decided that I was just going to cut out the pieces of the decal that I wanted. So I cut out, of course, the things I love, and then I'm just gonna cut out the taco, the little margarita, and then the guacamole on the side, and I'll leave the other pieces um, because I'm not gonna use them for this. I cut them so that I was able to sort of place it on the already placed white vinyl section without the two images overlapping and making sure that it all fits on that white background because of course that's what's gonna make this white decal or this decal really pop. 
So this is finished. The cup's going to go on the turner for two final coats of epoxy, just like I would with any other tumbler. And we're going to get started on working on the lid here. So again, these are the 30 ounce sort of stainless steel, uh, you know, screw on lids from Craft Haven. You can also buy these from Hog as well. They call theirs slurps and they have like 12 and 20 ounces. I want to say, I don't think they have as large as 30 ounces on the Hog website. So after I have sanded my lid, just like I would to prep any stainless steel project, I'm just going to cover up the threads with a bit of painter's tape here. And this is just going to protect, of course, the threads from getting anything on it that I'm applying here. But we're going to be using all UV resin for this project. So I want to start, of course, by base painting my stainless steel lid first. That way, when I apply the glitter, I won't need to do two coats of glitter. You could also spray paint it. There's nothing wrong with not spray painting it either. Um, but I misplaced the can of spray paint I used for the tumbler, so I had to just find a green paint that was just going to work. So I did two coats of paint really to make it super pigmented on the stainless steel lid. Then I'm going to use some UV resin to apply our glitter. So just a super thin coat of UV resin. You really don't need a whole lot when you're using it as your glitter adhesive. Very similar to epoxy. You really just need a super thin layer, enough to make it sticky and slippery, but not so much that if you were to tilt the lid from one side to the other, that you would have globs of it sort of, you know, pooling to one side or the other. So spreading that on with my gloved finger here, and then I'm gonna go ahead and add our glitter. I'm using Olea for the lid. I decided to go with a little bit of a darker lid than the actual cup because I want this piece to sort of like stand out. Now, of course, with all the things we're putting on top, it really is going to stand out really nicely, but I thought that also having like the darker lid, it would call, it would be like a, a really nice contrast to the other green. So still matching, because it matches like the guacamole color on the vinyl, but it also would just be different from the cup. So I'm going to set that under my UV lamp for 120 seconds, and then I'm going to continue to add layers of UV resin over top until my glitter is smooth. Okay. So I did about, I want to say I did probably two to three coats of UV resin over top of the glitter until I was pretty satisfied. Was it a hundred percent perfect? No, I probably could have gone maybe a fourth time because I did do really thin layers over top of the glittered section or over the top of the glitter on the lid. However, I wasn't really going to be too nitpicky because I know that we're going to be adding more stuff on top of this lid and then adding epoxy as the final step. So it really didn't make sense to continue to add more layers when I'm not really necessarily going to need that in the final end product. So the lid is finished as far as glittering. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to add all the pieces that we are going to use to make these, this lid topper. So I have these lime wedges that I got, lime rounds I should say, that I got from Amazon. I also have smaller like ice cubes and then I have like the crushed ice version as well. All of these I've had for like at least a couple years now and I've used them for various lids and things, but all of them I got off of Amazon. So of course I'll link those in the description box. We're gonna start with the lime round first because that sometimes can be the toughest piece to place. So we're gonna get that sort of placed where we want it at the back of the lid and then build from there. I like to start with the sort of, you know, square cubes first and then move to the crushed ice looking pieces. I just find that it's easier to move that way to each their own. Some people like to just use, you know, the faux crushed version of the, the ice or just use the cubes. I like to use both because I feel like it just adds to it. So I'm going to start by adding these three cubes. I put two on either side of sort of the straw hole right up against the lime round. And then I'm going to put one at the back to sort of support that lime round and prevent it from, you know, potentially leaning over if it's not secured 100%. So now that I'm satisfied with that, we now can move on to the sort of smaller crushed ice pieces. And so at this point, I'm really just going to layer some UV resin sort of in the front section here, and I'm just going to place them as they fit. So playing like a mini game of Tetris, you could say, and just continuing to add them to the lid where they're going to best fit. I've done so many of these lids and I will tell you that none of them look exactly the same, um, but that's kind of the fun of it. Like nothing ever looks exactly the same 
when you recreate something. And so although I've done so many of these, I kind of like that they're all like unique and a little bit different. I always feel like I build, <laughs> build like the ice on top of these lid toppers a little bit different every time, but that's just the fun in it. So I'm just gonna continue to add the smaller pieces of faux ice until I'm satisfied curing sort of small sections at a time. So I'm not doing the whole lid and then curing, like I'm doing small sections at a time because I wanna make sure that, you know, everything stays secured and that things don't end up being misplaced because it's too heavy by doing all of the pieces at the same time. So take your time with this. This probably, this took me a good 20 minutes to finish, start to finish. And that was after, you know, doing the actual lid or glittering the lid itself. So it does take a little bit of time, but have fun with it. These are really fun to kind of create. So now that I have the base part of my lid done, so I've gotten the ice, I've gotten the lime round on, now we're gonna do something fun. So we all know that when you get a margarita, of course you get either a sugar or salted rim, right? So I'm grabbing these sort of fire glass pieces that I picked up from Michael's. Most people use them for like filling bases, you know, with faux flowers and things, but we're actually gonna use these to kind of represent the salted rim of our margarita topper here. So now with these, you do have to be careful. They are shards of glass. So you wanna make sure that you are, you know, really careful while you're using these. So taking your time, picking out pieces that aren't too sharp around the corners and edges and things. They're not like shard, shard glasses, if that makes sense, but they are glass. So most of them are more like square and rectangular shaped, um, but it is still glass, so please be careful. <laughs> so I'm just gonna continue to sort of build on the top around the ice that I created. And then now I'm gonna do the outside of the rim as well. So with the outside of the rim, I sort of decided to paint on the UV resin and then place with tweezers, the small pieces of the fire glass that I'm using or the base filler that I'm using to create our salted rim here. So I had to kind of work in really small sections, of course, because this is a rounded lid. So if I move too far from one side to the other, then sometimes the small pieces would sort of shift. And so I just did them, you know, I probably took, I probably did this in like four or five sections all the way around the lid until I got to the other side, of course. So I cured it for about 30 seconds each time. That was just kind of the, the going time that I did where the UV resin would be secured. And then I just continued to do that until I got all the way around to the other side. So I'm gonna finish up the lid and then we're gonna come right back here. And so now that I finished up the lid, I'm gonna show you how I secure this to my turner. So I've talked about these before, but I really like to use these large foam inserts for my my tumblers. I find that they fit best. I don't struggle to get them out. Um, and they actually work really well to hold my lids as well. So I'm gonna put the lid on the end of this large foam piece here. And then I'm going to just secure that with painter's tape. You could use you know electrical tape as well. I just happen to only have painter's tape on hand. But this is what's going to go on my turner so that when I apply my epoxy here, which you're seeing me do now, I can ensure that I can let this spin and I don't have to worry about, you know, the epoxy pooling or dripping off in case I put too much epoxy on here because I'm going to put it on my turner just like I would for any other epoxying project. So I am now taking about five mLs of Flynn Sisters Artist Cure Epoxy and I am taking this paintbrush and I am applying it to all of the sections on my lid here. I'm being careful, of course, to avoid the center straw hole, but once I'm done with that, I will set this on my turner and let it fully cure. And so at the end, this is what the final result of the cup was. This came out so cute, even better than I expected. And for me, I would say that, you know, the overall cup design, of course, is a bit more of a beginner friendly tutorial. So I definitely encourage you to try it if you're just starting out. And the lid topper just, lid topper just adds like an extra pizzazz that you guys know that I absolutely love. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to give this video a huge thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.